So let's start reading the, the story of, of the Wright brothers. Chapter 1. Two high flyers are born. Meet Wilbur and Orville Wright. Impossible. Most people thought a flying machine would never work. For hundreds of years, people had been trying to figure out how to fly. Even the br brilliant inventor Leonardo da Vinci had ideas about the flight all the way back in the 1400s. That was way more than 1400 years before Wilbur and Orville Wright did the impossible. They were the first to build and fly an airplane in 1903. How did the Wright brothers figure out how to fly when so many others couldn't? They didn't go to college. They weren't rich, but or but Wilbur and Orville Wright had big imaginations, and they knew how to solve problems. Wilbur and Orville were curious kids. They wanted to know more about everything. When they grew up, they were still curious, and they were still a team. It took years and years, but they didn't give up. They learned the science of flying. They figured out how to build and control a plane. They taught themselves how to fly. Finally, on December 17, 1903, Wilbur and Orville Wright did the impossible. They flew. We were lucky enough to grow up in an environment where there was always much encouragement to children to pursue intellectual interests by Orville Wright. The Wright Brothers America The brothers were born shortly after the American Civil War, which ended in 1865. This war f was fought between the states in the north and the states in the south over states' rights, including slavery. After nearly four years, the war was over, and the country was one nation again. Unfortunately, Americans still disagreed about slavery and how to fix America. In 1867, Wilbur Wright was born near Millville, Indiana. The family moved to Dayton, Ohio, where Orville Wright was born in 1871. Life was different then. When the Wright brothers were born, people traveled by horse and buggy. They had to. The car hadn't been invented yet. The fastest way to travel was by railroad. There were no light bulbs or telephones. Without indoor plumbing, most families, including the Wrights, still needed to leave their houses to use the, bath the bathroom. They used an outdoor hut called an, out an outhouse. There were no airplanes when, right when the Wright brothers were boys, but there was a flying toy. It was a toy helicopter powered by rubber bands. Wilbur and Orville had one. They called it a bat. The flying toy made the boys wonder about flight. They loved it. Orville even tried to build one when he should have been studying in school. When the Wright brothers grew up, they would invent the first powered airplane that could carry a person. Their work just their work changed the world. Who were these brothers? Just how did they make the the first airplane? Chapter two The Early Years Family Ties Wilbur and Orville weren't just brothers, they were best friends. Their dad called them the in inseparable because they did everything together. The boys had a loving family. Rechulin and Lauren were their big brothers. Next came Wilbur, then Orville was born four years later. Their little sister Catherine arrived on Orville's third birthday. About their world, their parents Milton and Susan Wright helped them learn. Mr. Wright filled their house with books. Mrs. Wright helped the kids understand how things worked. She showed them how to take things apart and put them back together. Sometimes, Wilbur and Orville forgot to clean up after their project. Their mom didn't mind. She just moved the parts into a, to a kitchen shelf. The family moved a lot. Mr. Wright was a pastor for the United Brethren Church in Christ. Some years, he was also a bishop for the church, which meant he was in charge of the churches in the, his area. Sometimes he had to move closer to new churches. The family moved from Indiana to Ohio and then to Iowa. Moving wasn't easy, but they each had e but they had each other. Wright family tree. Two of a kind. Mr. Wright traveled a lot for work. When he was away, he wrote hundreds of letters home. His letters helped the kids learn about places they never visited. During one of his trips, he found the flying bat toy. Well, Wilbur and Orville played with it until it broke. Their stores didn't have flying bats. What could they do? The brothers got busy. They talked, planned, and built. They tested and failed. 
Then they tried again. Uh, finally, they made a new bat. It flew. Both Wilbur and Orville were hooked on flying. They were alike in other ways, too. They were funny and creative. They liked to build things and play music. Wilbur liked the harm played the harmonica, while Orville played the mandolin. Both boys were smart, too. Even their handwriting looked the same. The brothers had their differences, though. Wilbur was serious. He worked hard at school and earned good grades. Orville joked around. He often got in trouble at school. Orville did his work, but he didn't always try hard. From the time we were little children, my brother Orville and myself lived together, played together, worked together, in fact, thought together, by Wilbur Wright. Orville began building kites. He was just 10 years old, but they were good enough to sell his to his friends. Around this time, Wilbur started high school. He played sports like gymnastics and football. The family moved back to Dayton, Ohio. Wilbur was still a good student. He planned to go to Yale University after high school. When a hockey, then a hockey game changed Wilbur's life. A stick hit Wilbur in the face and knocked his teeth out. His whole face hurt. He ha he even had to get a false, even had to get false teeth. Wilbur was too badly injured to go to school, and it got worse. He developed heart and stomach problems. Wilbur was sad. Instead of gra Instead of graduating high school and attending Yale, he ended up staying home for three years. At first, Mrs. Wright took care of Wilbur. Unfortunately, she needed help too. She was sick with a lung disease called tuberculosis. Wilbur took care of her, even carried her up and down the stairs. <coughs> Wilbur never went to Yale, but he didn't stop learning. <coughs> Wilbur read a lot of read books when his mom didn't need him. He read a lot. Orville had been busy too. He wanted him. He wanted to have a business. Would Wilbur want to work with him? Chapter 3. The Right Businessman. The Newspaper Business. When Orville was 12, he learned how to how a printing press worked. It was a machine that put ink on paper to make words and designs. A friend let him use a small printing press he had. Together they published a school newspaper. Wilbur later got a summer job in a print shop. Then Wilbur and Mr. Wright gave Orville his own printing press. As Orville got older, he wished for a bigger, faster printing press, so he got to work. <coughs> he used... So he got to work. He used parts from an old buggy and a damaged tombstone. His self-inking press worked much faster, printing 500 sheets an hour. Wilbur was finally feeling better, so the brothers went into the newspaper business together. They printed the first edition of West Side News on March, <coughs> on March 1st, 1889. Sadly, not after long, their mother died of tuberculosis on July 4th, 1889. The rep. The Wright brothers wrote about her death in their paper. In 1891, Wilbur and Orville closed West Side News and printed more and more flyers and business cards for customers. The Wright brothers enjoyed the challenges and exper and new The Wright brothers enjoyed the challenges of new experiences. It made sense. America was changing quickly in the 1890s. People didn't just use buggies and trains to travel anymore. They began to drive cars, and everyone wanted to ride a bicycle, including the Wright brothers. The Wright Cycle Co. The bicycle was the new was the new craze. Pe people left their horses at home and pedaled to work. They could even leave town with a friend. Some rode bicycles just for fun. Orville was curious. He had to try it, so he bought a bicycle. Then Wilbur did too. They pedaled near and far. The brothers soon figured out how exactly how their bicycles worked. They started fixing bicycles for friends in, eight, in 1893. They were ready for a new business adventure. Adventure. Wait. In 1983, in eight, in 1893, they were ready for a new business adventure. They opened the Right Cycle Co Exchange, and they began. They became mechanics, fixing and 
selling bicycles. Myth and fact. Myth. Flying was a new idea in the 1800s. Fact. People had tried to fly with balloons and gliders and flapping wings for hundreds of years. Business was booming. Wilbur and Orville tra- changed the store's name to the Right Cycle Company, or Co. They wanted to do more for customers. They knew how bicycles work, so they desert- so they started designing bicycles in their own designing their own models. The Van Cleve bicycle was named for the great grandmother. It sold for sixty to sixty five dollars, almost two thousand dollars today. Their Saint Clair model sold for just forty two and fifty cents dollar. Forty two dollars and fifty cents. Over one thousand three hundred dollars today. Technology was moving fast during this time. The Wright brothers were excited for whatever could happen next. Could it be a flying machine? Chapter 4. Taking Flight Glide like a bird. When Orville was 25, he got sick after drinking unclean water. He caught a disease called typhoid fever and nearly died. Wilbur spent many worried hours beside his brother's bed in 1896. He used that time to read. Wilbur read about a German man named Otto Lithenel. Otto had built a glider, an aircraft designed <coughs> an aircraft designed to help a person fly. Gliders didn't need a motor. They used wind to fly. Otto made a lot of progress in human flight. He used his body to connect con- to control his glider. Unfortunately, Otto's experiments ended when he died in a glider crash. Wilbur wanted to know more about uh, aviation. He read all the books and articles he could find. When Orville was awake, Wilbur read them. Wilbur read to him. <coughs> Orville got better. He was curious about flying too. The more they learned, the more excited they could they they became about flying. Wilbur and Orville talked a lot about flying. They even did they did even more research. The brothers read about the work of aviators, Octave Shonet and Louis Perry Molliard. What they learned thrilled them. Louis thought birds could teach people about flying, so Wilbur spent Sundays wa- bird watching. Learning the secret from flight from a bird was a good deal, like learning the secret f- of magic from a magician or- by Orville Wright. The brothers understood the four forces of flight. One, weight is the heaviness, the heaviness of an object. Two, lift allows an airplane to come off, off the ground and stay in the air. Three, thrust is the forward movement made by an aircraft's motor. Four, drag is something that slows or stops an object from moving. Weight is the opposite force from lift. Thrust and drag are opposites. When a lift, when lift and thrust are strong, when when lift and thrust are strongest, the plane goes up. A plane flies level when the forces are equal. The brothers needed to. The, the brothers needed needed. The brothers needed to find the right balance to keep an airplane in the air. Other aviators had tried for centuries. Could these two bicycle mechanics really find the answer? Home away from home. Wilbur's bird watching paid off. He noticed that when a bird raised the tip of one wing, it lowered the other wing. It remained Wilbur of riding it reminded Wilbur of riding a bike. You move the handlebars to turn, but you also lean. Wilbur called it wing warping for flying. This was the discovery they needed. They had to show Orville how it worked. Wilbur squeezed the top of Wilbur squeezed the top and bottom of a cardboard box. One corner moved up and the other moved down. It was the summer of 1899. Wilbur tested wing warping on a giant kite in a field. The kite proved that war- wing that wing warping worked. Next, the brothers wanted to build a glider with the same controls as the kite. This new aircraft would carry a person. They talked, thought, and built. 
They needed, they needed Wynn to test the glider. Wilbur wrote a letter to, to the United States Weather Bureau. He asked them to suggest some windy locations. The small fishing village of Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, would be perfect. It had the wind they needed and lots of l sand for soft landings. Wilbur and Orville traveled by train and then boat to Kitty Hawk. They wanted to test the glider safely. Orville and their friend Bill Tate stayed on the ground. They held on to strings attached to the glider so that so that it would go so that it wouldn't go too high. Wilbur lay flat in the middle controlling the glider. They spent six weeks flying the glider like a kite. Then it was time for the real test. They removed all the strings. Wilbur would glide on his own. On October 19th, 1900, they achieved what they'd been working toward. Wilbur flew and controlled the glider. Another visit, after another visit to Kitty Hawk in 1901, the brothers returned to Dayton and got to work on a new way to test the, the gliders. They made a wind tunnel. It was a small box with air blowing through it. This device helped them test model gliders. It helped them understand how a full-sized airplane might fly. After more testing, they returned to Kitty Hawk. Wilbur and Orville flew a new size, a new full-sized, a new full-sized glider in September and October 1902. They learned to control it. This glider flew over 600 feet. But the brothers weren't finished yet. Their glider worked, but they really wanted to create a flying machine. To do that, they knew one thing for sure. They needed a motor. Chapter 5. New Heights It's a plane. Wilbur, Wilbur and Orville knew they'd make history. They'd made history in Kitty Hawk in 1902. They had they had controlled the glider in flight. No other pilot had ever done that. Next, they wanted to fly a powdered airplane. No one had a motor that was both small enough and powerful enough. Wilbur and Orville would have to make their own. They didn't know ab enough about motors, but they knew who to ask for help. Charlie Taylor already worked at the Ripe Cycle Company as a mechanic. As the brothers requested, Charlie designed a motor. It was small and powerful. Wilbur and Orville filled five notebooks with math and drawings for their for their new aircraft. They built it out of wood and called the and called it the Wright Flyer. The motor made it heavy, around 600 pounds. To lift all that weight, the airplane needed to be bigger. The wings and than their previous gliders bigger wings than the previous gliders. The flyer's wings were 40 feet and 40 foot, four inches wide, or 40 feet tall and four inches wide. The brothers covered the wings with fabric like, like the earlier gl gliders. Wilbur and Orville were the first aviators to add a propeller to an airplane. Propellers are like twisted wings that spin. Only boats had them before, the flyer had two wooden propellers, each eight feet long. With the propellers, wings, and motor, the flyer would have enough lift and thrust to fly. The Wright brothers were ready to test the flyer. The first flight. The brothers returned to Kitty Hawk, North Carolina in September 1903. They made a 60-foot track so the Wright flyer could have firm ground to gain speed. They called the track Grand Junction Railroad. Three months later, Wilbur and Orville were ready to fly. They tossed a coin to see who would pick, who would pilot the fr the flyer first. Wilbur won. He got in and took off. The flyer jerked up and down. It was in the air for three and a half seconds. Then the motor stopped. He crashed into the sand. But the brothers were excited. They knew exactly what went wrong and knew and how to fix it. They repaired the flyer and waited. A for the for good weather. Three days later, they tried again. The wind blew hard on the cold morning of December 17, 1903. It was Orville's turn to pilot the flyer. It was Orville's turn to pilot the flyer. 
The brothers shook hands. Orville lifted off the track at 10.35 a.m. for the flyer's first real flight. He stayed in the air for 12 seconds. The first flight was rough. Orville went up and down, but he flew for 120 feet. The Wright brothers took turns flying. The Wright flyer flew four times that day. The longest flight was 50 seconds long. The men were talking about flying again when a gust of wind blew. The wind slammed the airplane into the sand. The right flyer would never f the right flyer never flew again. Myth in fact. Myth. The first airplane was expensive. Fact. The materials and travel for the right for the right spent less than one thousand dollars by nineteen oh three. With still, Wilbur and Orville had to share the big news about their flights. Orville sent a telegram home. It began, "Success for flights, success for flights, Thursday morning." Wilbur and Orville plane. Wilbur and Orville's and Orville writes, "Airplane invention would change the their lives and the world." Chapter six: Frame and Fortune. Inventors and businessmen. The 1903 flight in Kitty Hawk was important. Wilbur and Orville didn't want someone else to copy their work before they could sell it. So the brothers applied for a patent. The patent would make it against the law for anyone to copy, use, or sell an airplane like theirs. They knew they could make airplanes more useful. They wanted their airplane to fly far and long. Wilbur and Orville wrote a letter to the U.S. Army. The Army didn't want to buy their airplane without seeing it fly. They decided not to fly for the Army. Not yet. In May 1904, the brothers began new tests near Dayton. They used a cow pasture called Hoffman Prairie. Friends, family, and even reporters gathered on May 26, 1904. The flyer two, the flyer the second, the flyer two only got eight feet off the ground. Something was wrong with the motor. The brothers faced problems for the next three months, but they didn't give up. By August, they were flying again. Wilbur flew in a couple cir flew in complete circles. Wilbur flew in a complete circle on September twentieth, nineteen o four. That flight lasted 1 minute and 36 seconds. The Flyer 2 flew 4,080 feet. Myth and fact. Myth. The Wright brothers were instantly famous. Fact. Newspapers and magazines weren't interested in reporting about Wilbur and Orville's flights. Wilbur and Orville had a flying machine. The news began to spread. Some other flyers thought the, the brothers lied. That's because no one else was close to flying. The brothers knew they had to show the world they were almost ready. Trials and Travels Wilbur and Orville made another airplane in 1905. The Flyer 3 had better steering and balance. The motor was stronger. They flew it at Huffman Prairie. The Wright brothers were ready to sell their airplane. They finally got their patent in May 1st in May 1906. That year, French leaders wanted to meet Wilbur and Orville. Wilbur boarded a ship on May 18th. Orville joined him two months later. They didn't fly. They attended meetings. They told people about air, their airplanes. They stayed until November. November. Wilbur returned to France the next year. Orville packed one of their airplanes into crates and shipped it to Wilbur in Flan France. But when Wilbur unpacked the crates in France, he had an awful time putting it back together. He discovered that many pieces were damaged or missing after the journey. He had, he finally finished rebuilding the aircraft. He had his first flight in France August 8, 1908. The crowd cheered and shouted as he flew. He flew circles and figure eights. Wilbur became famous, famous. The crowds grew to 200,000 people. He met royal families, kings, queens, princes, and princes and more. Now the world believed the Wright brothers could really fly.
Around the same time, Orville was flying tests for the Army in Fort Mayer, Virginia. Thousands of people watched. Everything went well until a propeller broke on sem- in September 8 on September 17, 1908, and the airplane crashed. Orville's passenger passenger died, and Orville was badly injured. It took months for him to get better. When he could travel, he and his sister Catherine went to U- Europe to be with their brother. When they finally returned to Fort Mayer, they flew more, showing that the airplane could travel 400 miles. 40 miles per hour with the pilot and passenger. Even though one of their planes had crashed, the army was impressed. They bought an airplane. The brothers weren't finished. Orville flew in Germany and France. A million people watched Wilbur fly over the New York Harbor. Everyone loved to watch the flyers. Chapter 7, Beyond the Sky. The Wright Company. Wilbur and Orville became known around the world. People wanted to buy their airplanes, so the brothers opened the Wright Company in 1909. They built airplanes in Dayton, Ohio. Wilbur was the president of the company, and Orville was the vice president. The Wright Company made more than a dozen different kinds of airplanes. In 1910, 1910, Wilbur flew the Wright Baby Grand model in 80 miles an hour. They also started a flight school that trained pilots to put on air shows. Crowds gathered to watch pilots fly airplanes and do stunts. After the Wright brothers flew for the public, other aviators copied their work. Wilbur and Orville wanted to protect their patents. It upset them to think others were selling airplanes with their designs in 1911. And with their designs. In 1911, Wilbur went to Europe. This time, he didn't fly for crowds. He was there for court cases. He explained why others should not use their designs. The judge in the court who would decide who was right. There were many court cases in Europe, in America. Wilbur and Orville won almost all of them. It was exhausting work. They missed experimenting and flying. In 1912, Wilbur got sick after eating bad oysters, like Orville many years before. Wilbur had typhoid fever. His body was too tired. He couldn't fight it. Wilbur Wright died at home on May 30th, 1912. He lost, he was 45 years old. Orville was devastated. He lost his best friend and business partner. The Wright Legacy. Orville still needed to run a business. Now he had to do the work without Wilbur. Orville and the Wright Company continued to make new models of airplanes. Is it possible to fly without motors? But not with It is possible to fly without motors, but not without knowledge and skills by Wilbur Wright. When World War One began, the government needed to know everything they could about flying. Patents no longer protected the Wright brothers. Science and math. The the Wright brothers science and math. There would be no more court cases, but the business wasn't the same without Wilbur. Orville wanted to experiment again. He sold the Wright Company in 1915 and set up a new laboratory in Dayton to test and research new inventions. Orville was happy to get back to inventing. He made a racing airplane and other things too. (coughs) He designed the flying clown toy He designed a flying clown toy called Flips and Flops. He also worked for the U.S. government and the National Advisory Committee of Aeronautics, NCA, NACA, which would later become NASA. Today, they send rockets and people into outer space. Orville saw his most famous invention do amazing things in 1927. Charles Lindbergh began the first person to fly across the Atlantic Ocean by himself. Orville landed to live to be 76 years old. He died in Dayton on January 30th, 1948, after a heart attack. National parks have been created in North Carolina and Ohio to honor Wilbur and Orville Wright. Even France made a monument to celebrate the inventors. They received many awards and honors for being the first people to design and fly an airplane. Neither Wilbur nor Orville Wright could have ne- 
could have been the first to invent the airplane on his own. They needed each other. They saw as a team, they tested as a th- team, and they didn't give up. Even when, the, when flight looked impossible, these smart men preserved, persevered, things, persevered when things got tough, and they succeeded. That's why we honor and remember the Wright brothers today as the inventors of the airplane. I hope you learned something about the Wright brothers. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!